was yeah. extra creepy. Oh, mm, yeah. no, yes. thank you. Mm, a little bit more. Mm. This time around. Yes. <sighs> no. You can only do that for so I'm like tiring myself out. I'm like almost out of breath over here for just breathing weird. It's just, oh, it's yeah. just strange. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's been fun having you on Patreon. I'm sorry you couldn't <laughs> hang around. <laughs> Just wait till this goes public to everybody. We're it's in a 30 lose. seconds of, of grunts at the beginning of each episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. Listen, people love it. I don't want to tell you. They, no, they feel no. like they belong. No. People don't love it. They love it. I'm telling the you. Aliens right and demons that listen, huge fans. Someone I think must. That- there's got to be at least, okay, if you're the Patreon member that enjoys this opening, let us know on Patreon. Just type a comment underneath, and uh, I appreciate it. And if you're listening to this in the future on YouTube, head to patreon.com slash pod to let us know. Yeah, if by the you're time robot, you're listening to this. Yeah? If you're robot? a robot, am I a robot now? Asking, asking the important questions. If you're a future robot, oh, yeah. do I become a future robot? Can you tell how many cars are in this picture? Are you a robot? <laughs> All right. <laughs> if we've all joined the singularity, can you ping me, please? Or ping if my we've consciousness? We've all joined the singularity. How can we log into our forums? Have I ever told you about how I want to make one of those? A but singularity? It'd be like, click all the images of a sandwich and then just have a bunch of hot dogs just to like <laughs> really get people crazy. The uh, worst capture of all time. Yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That happened to me once where I had a captcha and it said, uh, select all the cars. And I thought I did. And it was like, I'm sorry, you're missing a car. And I was like looking at it like, <laughs> where's the fucking car? car? There was no, there was no other car. It was, there was no car in sight. And this I was is, like, Am I? It, aren't, aren't those captures also secondarily useful in trying to train AI in what, in what is not uh, in a certain photo as well. So like, as we're doing those captures, we're also kind of teaching the AI what it has a car in it and what does it, I mean, et cetera, et cetera. Welcome our robot overlords. So whatever. Now, I'm just saying, I think that's true. I think that like Ignorance the caption also serves is as bliss. <laughs> if you dress, eat steak. If you put a cardboard <laughs> box on and you make beeping and booping sounds, <laughs> You'll be fine. In the yeah, you're just a flesh Nobody will be able to tell. It's fine. No one will be able to tell. Yeah. yeah. Guys, listen, I brought something to you guys today that I want to read because I teased it on the podcast. You did. And I think it's good. It's a follow up to a story that I put in the darkest corners of the Internet episode. Oh, boy. From which August is from 2020, 2020, as you yeah. specified, which is all, two years ago. Yeah. So this is from uh, a Reddit user. I'm not going to share their name on here. Uh, Just because there's parts of this that I need to keep uh, private, which you'll see why in a minute. But uh, here we go. So my husband kept reminding me to listen to y'all's podcast. I've watched all of you on YouTube. So it was literally just me being scatterbrained. Well, imagine my surprise as I'm going from the oldest to newest podcast. And I hear you tell the story about Jimmy C. That took place in 2005 in Savannah, Georgia. As you told the first half, I'm having a chuckle. I was a freshman or sophomore in college in Savannah, SCAD, at that time, and you learned fast, Sav is filled with weird slash drunk slash eccentric people. You can't go half a block without someone saying they've seen a ghost. There are people buried under the ground everywhere because of, I believe it was, a yellow fever outbreak. Tunnels for pirate smuggling run along the riverfront. And SCAD has a building on nearly every block in the historic area. So hell, I once was walking through Forsyth Park and watched over 100 students reenact the fights in 300 with pool noodles and foam swords. Basically, I am saying Savannah is a weird fucking place to live. Okay. <laughs> Yet as you read the Jimmy C story, something about uh, something about it sounds really familiar. Maybe I had heard someone telling it in a bar when I still lived there. I wouldn't have read it online since I don't really go searching for such stories online. I mainly use Reddit for game info or other interests I have and don't interact much. Either way, I just continued listening, brushing it off as vaguely familiar. Then you got to the second part where the guy got back in touch with his ex-girlfriend and he described her. Has parents who are scientists, is analytical and non-religious. The scientist's parents tickled something in my memory, but I hadn't grasped it yet. Then he says she now lives in Wisconsin, is a school teacher, married a woman, and is trying to have a child. I froze, then yelled to my husband who's in the next room, Oh shit, I'm pretty sure I know the people in the Jimmy C story. Of course, it had been forever since he'd listened to that episode, so I had to recap it for him. But the more I listed the similarities between the ex-girlfriend and my once friend and poetry classmate, I was sure it was using her nickname in case you want to talk about it on the podcast. She was a very sweet girl and loved writing. But while she said she was non-religious, she was heavily into the supernatural and occult. 
Her favorite thing to do at house parties was read tarot cards for people, and her major was illustration, if I remember correctly, and she was very good at it. However, she had horrible tastes in guys. Many of us were actually relieved when she came out to us as lesbian because she was much better at choosing girlfriends. And I tell you that because the guy she was dating at the time was a self-involved, egotistical, and constantly inebriated mess. He thought he was the second coming of an amalgamation of Jack Kerouac and Charles Bukowski. Oh, Bill. Jesus. <laughs> I know the type. <laughs> oh, no. That's Listen, I was an English major. I know the type. <laughs> yeah, I the only, things, the only things he had in common with either was driving around, being drunk and high, and misogynistic. Tangent about that guy over. The Jimmy C they met at Fanny's. The food is decent there. Overcharging for a burger, but the low country boil is a good deal. <laughs> probably just one of the many <laughs> wet story is amazing. I know, right? <laughs> it just makes Jimmy C all the better. It was probably just one of the many whack jobs in Savannah that wanted to hit on and chase off the boyfriend. It is an unfortunately common occurrence when you go to bars in Savannah. I can't tell you how many vampires I was hit on by that claimed they were hundreds of years old when I went out with friends. How many mediums, psychics, etc. that saw me as one of their lovers in a past life or had talked to the ghost of my dead mom or dad? Their ghosts were standing right behind me, of course saying that they were encouraging me to say yes to a date with them. I met people who claimed they were reincarnated gods and topside visiting demons. That's just the type of town Savannah is. It's a Mathis what? town. I added that uh, part. Anyway. Oh, you fucker. You ass. Because <laughs> I was leaning into the mic to go, what's the cost of living in this yeah, place? Like, yeah. I feel like I fit in really well. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if this makes you more or less intrigued by the Jimmy C story, but I thought it was too crazy to hear my once good friend talked about on your podcast. If you want crazy ghost stories, look up Savannah ghost stories or something of that nature. There are so many. There are multiple haunted tours you can take if you visit there. Love the podcast, especially the true crime ones. Can't wait to catch up to the newest ones. P.S. And your wife now live happily and have two children. Bam. Wow. That's wild, man. That's nuts. That's I can't believe in the same day, too. We're getting two updates on two older episodes. That's right? nuts. That's weird. That's one of those words that doesn't make you want to believe, Jesse. Does it make you want to believe in the paranormal? What it makes me realize, I'm going to let you know the entire time <laughs> at the end of that story, I was thinking like, how come it's only guys that do the whole like, I'm a vampire and your ghost aunt <laughs> tells me that we should get together. Like it's never, I've never had the experience of a woman girl? approach me being like, Jesse, now I know this is going to sound crazy, <laughs> but this ghost says we should have sex. And I would be like, the ghost is right. I'm going to let you know that ghost. Correct. I have, it's I have, family members. I have seen, I have seen both genders. Uh, but the but the only ones not in a relationship have been men, unfortunately, for them. <laughs> and those ghosts are trying so being... hard. They're trying so hard to set them up. They just picked the wrong people. Your grandma really wants me to suck your dick. Like, just let, let make your grandma happy. Like, that's, 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 <laughs> I'd be like, Nana, this is for you. I'd be like, that's not her. <laughs> Hang up the phone. <laughs> Hang up yeah, the phone. No, that's she not would never. No, that's not my nana. Say that. yeah. That's not <laughs> nana at all. Uh, before we go to Jesse's, I don't know what Jesse has, but prior to us recording, Jesse found some crazy science thing, and I don't know what it is. So I we'll have, end I on have that. Two options, and I'm gonna just let the two of you decide. Really. All right. Well, we'll all get right. to that in a minute because mine's easy. Because I've been trying to find. I was trying to find something really weird and paranormal that happened over the past like week. There's like nothing. There's like nothing out there. Here's the best thing I could find. Did you boys know a couple of weeks ago, um, another monolith appeared? I saw it briefly, but I didn't even read the article because I assumed it was just the same story again. Oh, so, well, yeah, for the most part, it's, it's very similar. However, uh, this monolith ended up appearing out in uh, north of Phoenix, Arizona, along Highway I-17. Um, and it once again uh, got appeared overnight. There's even a news thing about it. They kind of talked about it, but I, I don't even care that it's a monolith. I, I, I does That's not surprising. What I need you boys to see is what this monolith actually looks like. And the fact that this made it on the news is absolutely baffling. Is it me. a dong? Is it no, a it's not a dong. No, it's not something perverted. It's oh, just man. disappointing. It's just disappointing. Is it just a cardboard stand up of Mathis <laughs> waving <laughs> hey. with a shirt that says uh, monolith a link in zoom. Just go to the minute in like one or two second yeah. mark. You can even go to the minute mark. No, this sucks. Look at this thing. How how did something like That's this foil, dude? That's they want to know you. what the monolith means. It means someone had foil and wrapped it around like a piece of of I don't know stone or some garbage. 
This is like up there with that last one we talked about with that. Uh, oh, no, the, it was the one that Alex brought the uh, the the potential Bigfoot sighting where it was like someone's back foot, like for a leaving brief second, frame. the left of the, leaving the frame and the camera just wouldn't fall. This looks like the aggro crag. This doesn't even look <laughs> this looks like it was made at Nickelodeon <laughs> Studios in Orlando, Florida. It, uh, <laughs> it, it definitely it, the edges, the corners are taped down with a foil tape. You can see it's like really obvious. Yeah, you this can is see, like. But every seam. What's great about this video you linked is the fact that not only does it have seventy four or seventy two thousand views, um, <clears throat> the people in it are so happy to see this monolith. Oh, the lady have y'all seen like, the monolith? It's great. Have y'all been <laughs> down to the monolith? Have y'all seen it? Have y'all seen the monolith? Say yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one person. This is this my monolith flute. It's been my family for generations. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that. I'll I'll go to my grave remembering that video. The leprechaun video. <laughs> That's a ten a out of ten. <laughs> That's a ten out of ten. Uh, we should. I definitely, wish we had been doing Chiluminati at that time. We should be definitely doing the greatest hits. Uh, <laughs> We should one day crazy do greatest cryptids hits. video. We definitely should. <laughs> that would be so much fun. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Jesse, what are our choices today? All right, gentlemen and folks at home. Your choices today. I'm just going to read you the headlines. <clears throat> the first, a large metal safe just mysteriously appeared at a Toronto museum. What? what? Or... <laughs> Woman, 19, confused to learn her 13-year-old brother is actually her twin. What? What? Yeah, I'll, wait, give, I'll give you, you can pick your choice. Like, Both I love. Did, wait, that doesn't How, though? How would, like, a fertilized egg just kind of sat? I'm just going until... to let you pick. What do you want to I also want to know about the safe. Well, oh, maybe. This is uh, hard. I, or do you want both? I mean, uh, I vote for both what about I'm, you, I'm on team both but if i have to pick one i'm going safe all I right am with you i would have gone safe as well then i'll save the safe for last okay woman 19 confused to learn her 13 year old brother is actually her twin in a tiktok video 19 year old anna states that she just learned her brother is actually her twin which isn't too crazy until you learn that her sibling is five years younger than her what? She wrote in her post, when you casually get told over lunch by your divorced parents that your 13-year-old brother is actually your twin, but you're 19. What is that? Like, what, what do we mean by twin at this point? Well, without much context, everyone else had comments just like you guys. They were like, wait, wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. In a follow-up video, Anna explained what was actually going on. She described that she learned she was conceived through in vitro fertilization, and her brother was also conceived the exact same time in the exact same place. However, I see. rather than be pregnant with twins, <laughs> her mom chose to have one baby and then wait and then have the other baby. Yes. Imagine learning. I don't know if I would. What would you be more stunned by? You put yourself in the, cho- the shoes of these children. Either A, you learn that your brother is actually a twin through some sciencey shit or B, your mom knew you were going to that you were fertile and that they were going to have you. But they put you on ice for a few years. And we're just like, I would be messed you, up baby. about that. If I was the kid that I was put too. on ice, I'd be messed up. Yeah. I was my brother. I've been what? So I've been alive longer technically than than that. Like, that's the crazy part. You're like yeah, an so- aged baby. Like you were like the oldest baby ever when you were born. I mean, that's basically what Anna says is that they were both conceived in a dish. She was then put back in her mom and her brother was left in the dish and put <laughs> in storage. Left basically in the dish. Cold storage. That's uh, crazy. That like, you get no, anytime left I got in the into dish an argument with my brother, I'd be like, shut up, storage kid. <laughs> you got left back in the dish, your fucking storage. You're back to your dish. <laughs> mom should have left you, you ever miss your dish, already. dude? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, That's Anna awesome. added, it got to five years of Jack being in the freezer, and they were like, well, we'll defrost him. <laughs> oh, and they Jack. defrosted him, put him back in my mum, oh and my then God, nine Jack months later, Frost. there you go. Put him back oh. in my mum. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. She replied, obviously, we're not identical twins, but technically, biologically, we are twins. That's Commenters, hilarious. of course, were like, that's not how twins work, but she's like, look, that's what we are. We're, that's fucking we're, insane, bro. Yeah. So that's, that's even the if story. They weren't, 
technically twins, it's still hilarious. Fascinating, <laughs> right? Fascinating. That he was put on ice for five years until mama was ready to, to grow you out. It's just All an right. upsetting thought. It's just a weird thing. It's just a Science, bizarre thing. Science, man. It's thing. crazy. Yeah. The idea that like, oh, that's a that's a dish baby. That baby was that's a frozen platter child. That's like what I do with my garlic squares before I use it. <laughs> you know it's I mean? crazy. <laughs> like, no offense to anyone who was like made in a lab. By the way, if I was made in a lab, I would be hype as hell. I'm just going to put it that out there. doesn't mean anything about yeah, you, yeah. the person. Oh, it's I just like I would be so hype. Also. I would hope they did one of those like genome correction things that made me like cooler than I actually am. But like, whatever, that's how, you know, that's how, you know, I, well, I was homegrown because I'm a big dweeb. If I, oh man, I can't wait what for you, future. I'm going to genetically engineer a clone of myself. He's what be, are you talking about? Why? Uh, for what reason? I wouldn't even you put, your, put to, the clone to, on ice until you die. To put my brain in his body. I wouldn't do even mean? do that to my pet. That's like some, what you're talking about is like an anime's final episode. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, if money was no object, I'd probably clone a pet. Yeah, I would. I would. No, I wouldn't. No, I clone myself. It would myself. be too depressing. They wouldn't Pets? be the same. Nature versus oh, nurture. Uh, yeah, you'd have to walk in with that understanding that they'd only visually be identical. They At wouldn't that be the point, same. Like, animal. what's the point? I'd clone a me, but with no brain. Then I put my brain inside the me. Yeah, so you you literally but he looks are slightly are, different. I'd make him look slightly different so that no one would know, and I pretend to be my own son. Oh Jesse, you're making, yeah. You, oh, Jesse's yeah. creating I'd the first Evangelion. The is what's oh, happening. Yeah, I would be Little like, Jesse. Little Jesse is making, yeah, you're making your own first like, Ava. Oh no! <laughs> it's gonna be, no! It's gonna be, be like, like Vern Troyer, but with like a little <laughs> red mustache. I beard. leave everything to my grandson, little Jesse. And they'll be little like, little Jesse oh, Cox. No! <laughs> and then, then when I, and then, yeah, and then I'll bury my old self and be like, <laughs> The fools. No one suspected. Tis I. The original make, uh, Jesse. Like some Polish think- game developers will make a video game about you. <laughs> and that'll be the twist. Yeah. Yep. The end. Uh, <laughs> anyway, now for the Have most Canadian show. story you've ever heard. Oh, God. A metal safe has just appeared in front of a downtown Toronto museum. And people are wondering where it came from. The well-worn safe uh, with an old style combination dial lock appeared in front of Mackenzie House on Bond Street this week, according to Carlos E. Tovar Schoner, who snapped a photo of the box. The safe had a sign that reads free to any home. Schoner posted the photo on the Weird Toronto Facebook group on Wednesday. He was told the safe was dropped off on the uh, in the yard of McKenzie House, but that the facility couldn't keep it because they didn't know what was inside. They couldn't get access to it, so they just left it out front. <laughs> the spokesperson for the McKenzie House said the safe was not the property of the museum, and they didn't know anything about it, and as far as they could tell, it had no historical significance. It was estimated to weigh about 300 pounds, the spokesperson said. By Thursday morning, the safe was gone and the museum staff have no idea who took it they have no idea what was inside it no idea why it was put there it looks sturdy enough and heavy enough that one person probably couldn't have just carried it away so who took it the best part about this article is it then says another person suggested a possible safe cracker linked to the safe cra- safe cracker could fix that and maybe they another might be able to get inside person. The cash guard safe listed for sale. And again, a link to it mentions that a combination on these boxes could be a uh, reset with a special reset key, especially for the particular model in question. And then it links to how to find that. <laughs> so while not clear on who put the box there or why all this might prove useful for whoever took it. <laughs> what in the, the world? Most <laughs> Toronto. So if you have it out there. Hey, have a good time. That's so Canadian. Like, look, we don't know what it is. We don't know why it's there, but here's some helpful things. If you ever want to get inside it. Why did this person write this story? They're like, we don't know. Uh, we're not even sure if this actually <laughs> happened. I, Nobody. There's like a, sk- a scheme here. Apparently. I'm just if like, yeah, I want to get uh, in no, it. This is exactly how you open it. Got to go. Bye. Sounds like a modern day Trojan horse. I would never take that into my house. God knows in the middle of the night, someone steps out of it and murders me in my sleep. Fucking my favorite. My favorite part is the comments are the question should be what was in it? And then the response (laughs) was probably nothing. It's empty. And then another person responds. 
<laughs> a scrapper probably bagged it. Those things are worth a couple of bucks in a scrapyard. And then the final one by Tracy. Why is this even interesting? And Adrian <laughs> replies, slow news day. Canada, everybody. <laughs> That's the like- nicest comments. <laughs> like the comment section is like people just talking, having a good chat. <laughs> it's crazy. What on earth? <laughs> <laughs> would never happen in a YouTube comment section Mm-mm. ever. It would be a war and then quickly devolve into who's stupider for snow for no reason. That's insane. Anyway, <laughs> that's it for us guys. Thank you so much for the support on Patreon. Enjoy this little mini. We'll be back next week with a brand new mini sode for you guys exclusively here on Patreon. And uh, in just about a week, it'll be movie night yet again here on the uh, Chiluminati Patreon. I'm very excited for it. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks again. Goodbye. everybody. Stay fly. Bye. Thank you to Talkspace for sponsoring today's episode. And putting yourself first in the new year doesn't have to be a challenge thanks to Talkspace. Using Talkspace feels a little bit like having a mental health professional in your pocket. We don't talk about the one that was in my pocket. He's no longer with us. Talkspace offers therapy and psychiatry and being able to reach out to my provider at any time, anywhere makes taking care of my mental health super, super easy. Whether I'm working or managing everyday tasks, taking care of my own mental health has never been easier. Working through things in therapy can be tough, sure, but connecting with my therapist isn't and you can get help with or without insurance. Most insurance members only pay 25 bucks, copay or less. Getting started is obviously the most important and can be the most difficult part. There's no need to wait until something goes wrong in your life to look for a therapist. Of course, Talkspace is also there to help with any specific challenges you might be facing. It's the number one online therapy platform with thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and much, much more. Your therapist can help you set and achieve your goals moving into 2023. And because I'm going to repeat myself just a little bit, Talkspace is super convenient. It's like one of my favorite things. Honestly, the best part for me is its security. Talkspace is secure and private using the latest end-to-end bank-grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. And now Talkspace is in network with most major insurers. Insured members on average pay a $20 copay or less. As a listener to this podcast, you're going to get 100 bucks off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com and use our code CHILL. Match with a licensed therapist today. Just that's all you got to do. Go to Talkspace.com and use our code CHILL to get 100 bucks off your first month and it shows the support for our show. That's CHILL and Talkspace.com. Hello, my little Chiluminots, and welcome oh, oh, back. Oh, oh, oh. Mini sword. After that incredibly, incredibly sexy episode on John Wayne. Ho, ho, ho. Imagine if that was John Wayne Gacy's theme song. Bad to the uh, bone. Nah, 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 nah. Dude, bum, I've bum, got his theme bum, song bum, on my fucking bum, nah. turntable. Yeah, you technically have. Heartbreaking. Makes me cry listening to that fucking song. How, uh, how accurate is it up to this point now that you've gotten... So far, so good. It is literally <laughs> There's like, a verse about chicken. Like, and he got KFC. He's and all the, the wheels were greased with chicken. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> when you called him the Colonel Man, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, I mean, look, it on. wasn't a straight... I mean, it was, I, it was an obvious joke. I'll I guess that that's way. true. But you didn't uh, expect him to have called himself the Colonel, did you? No. On a complete other note, I got a wild thing for you today. Dude, that's good because like I have an, a story that I wanted to talk about and the update came up for it a couple days ago and it's not nearly as exciting as I thought it was going to be. So it's going to be kind of lame. That's okay. We talk about all the time, hollow earth, mm-hmm. hollow moon, reptilians under the earth, dude, all that stuff. But now... Can I, can I first just say, I am see- those might be some of the episodes we get the most crazy, angry people coming from my throat. We do hollow earth, hollow moon, faking the moon landing episode you did. Man, that ruffled some feathers. Let them. Let them get ruffled. It's, just, it's funny. I just, I just find it funny that those Live are like the most aggressive fans. Sheeple. <laughs> Live in ignorance, you sheeple. All right. What do you got for us, Alex? Bring it, bring it on. Hollow earth, hollow moon. New article out. Uh, new story out about. Maybe instead of that, what if the Earth is alive? Ah. A Terranian being that can think on its own. I have a quote for you to read uh, from a theory presented in the International Journal of Astrobiology. No idea what sort of accreditation that has. But here is the quote uh, for Mathis to read right there. If the collective activity of life known as the biosphere can change the world, could the collective activity of cognition and action based on this cognition also change the planet? 
Once the biosphere evolved, Earth took on a life of its own. If a planet with life has a life of its own, can it also have a mind of its own? An now, ego, if you will, an Earth, yeah, yeah, a Gaia, ego? a Mogo, if you will. <laughs> right. Uh, the here's what I'll say. I did an episode long ago uh, on a show called Game Theory about a like the idea that the toads from Mario are real. Like they're like, like, like what would, what would they be? And, and, and maybe they're like a hive mind sort of like insidious creature. And like looking into the research, I mean, I'm not going to say that the apps, the episode is scientifically accurate. Cause let's be honest, like it's a show for entertainment game yeah. theory. Uh, but, but in researching that script, I found that like plants across the globe are like connected via like mycelium, like, like they can like, communicate across the world in like a plant internet almost. And the, that's the evidence that this paper kind of leans on. It's Adam Frank, professor of physics and astronomy at the university of Rochester. So this is not like, I mean, unless the university of Rochester is like in a mini mall next to a spaghetti and meatballs place. I, I think this is a real thing. Uh, but he's saying that is like st- Steps towards planetary intelligence, like fungi networks. Uh, but here is a quote for Jesse to read uh, uh, from them about that uh, about this same topic. We don't yet have the ability to communally respond in the best interests of the planet. There is intelligence on Earth, but there isn't planetary intelligence. Yeah. Now, what he's saying is not that <clears throat> he's saying that basically he talks about climate change and he talks about us living on the earth and he calls that the immature technosphere uh saying that the the stage that earth is at right now is the the immature technosphere phase where our technosphere which is like satellites just based not more than satellites just everything that we have on the earth that connects us together the internet probably is part of the technosphere uh is like not integrated into the earth systems. It's like a, like a cuckoo bird, like intelligence living on the earth, separate from the one that was already here. Right. Gotcha. Which is like, which is like the air moving around the oceans, moving around the plate tectonics. And so the technosphere that we have created is like at odds with the earth systems. And that maybe our technosphere is eventually going to destroy Earth's like primary computers, Uh, you know, if you know what I'm saying. And so. According to him, intelligent life does not equal us because we're stupid for doing this. Uh, But here is another quote for uh, you know what? You guys can decide between you who wants to read this one. (laughs) I my headspace right now is that I thought Mathis's gamer chair was a ghost walking behind him. So (laughs) that would be awesome. If that was true, I'll I'll let you guys make the decision here. I got I'll read this unless you want it. I I got it. I mean, you're already in. The biosphere figured out how to host life by itself billions of years ago by creating systems for moving around nitrogen and transporting carbon. Now we have to figure out how to have the same kind of self-maintaining characteristics with the technosphere. Yeah. So So, nanomachines? I don't know exactly, but if you think about it, right, like this is not from where it starts as a theory about describing how the world works to where it ends as a theory about describing how the world works. Not that far fetched. Kind of an interesting idea. Uh, but yeah, we need to, the idea that he's putting forth is that in order to fix this disparity, we need to start integrating our systems with the biosphere and with the earth systems and get it all, you know, in harmony, you know, like you got to live in harmony with your environment and keep it going uh, rather than just eating it alive. Uh, but, uh, Grant Morrison, famous comic book writer, they always say that they had a vision of the earth being consumed like they they had this nightmare of the earth being consumed like a like a like the the humans land on it like some sort of lichen or like a virus or something Mm. and consumes the whole planet and then it becomes like a pupa and then the 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 humans leave like butterflies off the planet and and go off into space so (laughs) i don't know there's a lot of ways to think about this. It's pretty conceptual stuff. It's pretty hippy dippy type stuff, but just I mean, I even if I don't 
even if I don't believe that the Earth has an intelligence, like the message is nice and probably something we should try to strive for regardless. I mean, it's not I that think- far from just saying like, if you want to think about it, we're just all crew yeah. members on Spaceship Earth. But, <laughs> yeah, pretty you know, much. It's a yeah, little headier than that. I, but I feel like any person who grew up in the 90s and early 2000s has played any JRPG. This isn't <laughs> like anything new or weird to you. You're like, yeah, no, yeah, I get it. That checks yeah. out. Unless like a piece of the, the alien race like, gets stuck underground and starts cloning itself to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the Earth will handle it. Because it has the life force and uh, the mana will defeat the like. Don't even stress. <laughs> I thought we were going to go like the way of the Eternals, where like we're incubating some giant baby Dude. that will forever change the way our planet is. Don't get Jesse started, started, I'm gonna lose started my on the mind. dreaming celestial. He's what's happening crazy. with that thing, huh, Jesse? What do you think's happening? Why is it being ignored? Here's what's gonna happen. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it right now. You guys are here in the mini sode. What's what's today? February twentieth, twenty twenty two. No, my, no media has ever been said about this. It's gonna have to do with the X Men. Goodbye. All right. No, it's not. It's going to have to do the X-Men. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to deviate away from the X-Men here and talk about a mutant <laughs> that didn't end up being a mutant, unfortunately. What? Uh, Scarlet Witch? Because that's a big bummer. Let me tell you what. <laughs> She's a witch. Oh, She's yeah. Alex. Witch? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I, I'm sure that the years that she spent as Magneto's daughter meant nothing to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Okay. First of all, in Pennsylvania, the past couple of weeks, there's been this weird creature that was caught, literally caught alive, and they weren't sure what it was. They thought it might be the mythical chupacabra. It kind of looked like a dog slash a coyote with some mange. They genuinely couldn't couldn't figure out what it was doing, and it kept escaping, like to the point where like they had it captive at one point, and it opened a window and left through the window, and they had to recatch it again. Um, what? However, the tests have come back, and this is why I'm like, this is disappointing. Because it's just a goddamn coyote. Well, of all course it is. The coyote with mange, and that's all it was. And I was very, I was like, well, that's a lame kind of bummer for a story. Uh, so instead, watch this lake monster that got filmed in Taiwan, boys. Go this on. Got, I've got to send what, you. Is it on Twitter? Oh, no. No on link Zoom, yet. Oh, there okay, it is. See, there it, okay. So this was, I'll, I'll read the article. <clears throat> A paddleboard instructor in Taiwan captured some rather remarkable footage of a sizable mystery creature that suddenly appeared near him in the water. What's According the to a local media this? report, the wild encounter occurred earlier this month at a location known as Sun Moon Lake as Lai Yong Li was teaching a pair of tourists. During the lesson, he noticed that something seemingly out of the ordinary had emerged from the depths of the water and was lurking near the surface. Intrigued by the puzzling sight, Yong Li paddled over to it and was left astounded by what he saw. Captured on video by the man, the oddity in question was a monstrous looking fish measuring around six and a half feet long. Yang Li deduced the length of the creature by observing that it was more than double the size of his three foot long paddleboard. Thanks the, to the miracle of modern technology, the, the instructor was able to capture it. Yeah, the the video footage, it's a minute 25. And I'll be honest, most of it's really hard to tell how big this thing is. But if you go to 101, you can see it and then paddleboards in the background. And it gives you some indication of how yeah. big this thing actually is. It's got bizarre eyeballs. Weird little side <laughs> things. It does have like, like little goofy wing eyes. It, it looks like a Yoshi goofy eyeballs. island type enemy with the eyeballs. But other than that, like, is there really anything about this that doesn't just scream like eel to you? Well, we're at a lake, so I guess it could be an eel lake. Like, I mean, I there's freshwater eels, right? And I imagine I just kind of like favorite to- sushi. This man is a paddleboard instructor. He's probably been in the ocean hundreds of times, has seen a ton of stuff. So something to catch him by surprise is definitely worth noting at the very least. Oh, for sure. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, basically it's very Marvel, disturbing. It's very yeah, disturbing it's, footage. It's a super cool looking like fish. Uh, the video quickly went viral and was covered by several national news outlets in China. As for what the monster could have been, the clarity of Yang Li's footage allowed for the mystery to be solved fairly quickly as experts were able to uh, passingly identify the creature as most likely being a speckled long fin eel. That's some that's big, what I mean, that checks out. Unagi. Yeah, yeah, I love unagi. It's so that's delicious. What I'm saying. That's freshwater eel right there. Mm, I love it. I love it so much. I want it. That's it. My cool Whoa. story of the chupacabra <laughs> ended up being a flop. So uh, it makes me sad. Well, hey, if you think about it with a little more information, most of the things that I say I would know. be a flop. So don't think, don't worry about it too much. <laughs> True. Uh, Jesse. So I have come prepared with three stories that are very quick that okay. I love. And I want to share them it. with you okay. because they are. They span the breadth, 
the breadth, the, the breadth, breadth, the breadth and length of the human experience. Here we go. Story number one. Mail arrived this week. Actually, it was last week at a New Jersey home 75 years after it was mailed. Was it the fucking guy from the end of Back to the Future who showed up? <laughs> wait, no. wait, 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 wait. Say that again. He what? Say that whole sentence again. Well, I'll just read what Caton. Please do. Because like, my brain said, heard you, but it didn't comprehend you. <laughs> uh, Gary Caton said, I open up my mailbox and I get this letter and I'm like, okay, first of all, this isn't me. It's airmail. And then I look closely and it's dated May 4th, 1946 on the postmark. Wow. wow 75 where? years ago. Did they, exactly. Do we know what's in it? Do we know what's in there? So he hasn't opened it. He hasn't opened the oh, letter. Come on. But what he did do was like any good person would do immediately decide to become a private sleuth and figure out who this belonged to. So he began to That's hunt exactly down these what people. Do. Yep, and he was like, nowadays. I don't know who this is for. It's 75 years old. The person might be dead, but maybe the family knows something. So he's been like researching and trying to find out who these people are. That's why there's an article Air on it. Mail. Yeah, dude. And uh, when they contacted the post, when, when the post office was contacted about this, like how the hell did this take so long? The post office said, look, that kind of thing, seven decades does not happen. But what does happen frequently is old pieces of mail like this are maybe found by someone like maybe they were in a lockbox or or an old postcard or letter. Just some weirdo at a chucks it in the mail, basically. Yeah, like maybe an antique mm. shop had the letter and then someone bought it and then was like, F it and sent it. And so they're essentially saying that they aren't necessarily responsible for it. But at some point, someone put it back into the mail system and it got to that address. Wild. Yeah. And so I thought that was super With interesting. Postage stamps and everything. That's everything. so weird. And they, they allowed it, which is crazy. That's, that's that's where my mind went. I'm like, they let that happen without getting more money. Yeah. So yeah. weird. But apparently it was already stamped to be sent. If so you buy if the anything, stamps, you got the it stamps. was lost by the Postal Service in 1946 because yeah, it that's had what the stamps like. of it being the old stamps. Yeah. So it's, I thought that what was interesting. The fuck? Dude, that's I like a you, Da Vinci code happening Je- behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesse, see, keep your eye on that. I want to know if what we, if we ever learned what's in the letter. Yeah, yeah. dude is, is, is looking into it uh, until the story. Um, it says until we know more, it remains a mystery. So we'll find out another story that I love. It is one of my favorite things ever. Dylan Helbig, eight years old, wrote a Christmas book. What is his last name? Helbig. H E L B I G Helbig okay. Dylan Helbig Helbig eight years old wrote a Christmas comic book snuck it into his library in Boise Idaho and <laughs> the librarian like what Banksy did yeah the librarian <laughs> saw it thought it was so cute cataloged it and put it on the shelves incredible now there is a backlog of a hundred people waiting to to like check it out yeah um apparently this is my favorite part of the entire thing the uh the adventures of dylan helbig's uh chrismis c-r-i-s-m-i-s <laughs> by his self <laughs> is 88 pages with text and color illustrations pages. That's Holy incredible. Shit. <laughs> I did this kid's hard. amazing. I used to make, I literally used my job. You literally used to be kids would like draw shit on paper and I would turn it into a book and not one of them has ever been 88 pages. Yeah. I would be mind blown if that ever came to my doorstep. <laughs> my favorite part of this thing is the way his dad describes the book. Cause he says the book is everything from an exploding tree topper to time travel. As Dylan is transported back centuries to the first ever Thanksgiving in 1621. <laughs> I love this book. <laughs> I want it. Oh, it's amazing. And then because I wanted to end on something even more fantastical than a kid getting his book in a library and a 75 year old letter. This is my favorite story of the week. I don't even know how to describe this because it opens up so many possibilities for adventure. An abandoned cargo ship carrying Porsches is burning in the middle of the Atlantic. That's right. This I fucking love. This is still going on. 
The last article I, I, I read was Thursday, but it is still happening. The Felicity Ace, a cargo ship designed to transport vehicles, was reportedly evacuated Wednesday uh, while it was in transit in the mid-Atlantic Azores Island region. All 22 crew members have been rescued, but the cars are still on board. Here's the thing. According to everyone reporting on this, under maritime law, that is abandoned cargo and Anyone who seizes that vessel can have the, like they are, it's finders keepers, basically. Damn. So if you're willing Let's to go put boys. out a, Let's go boys. a fire at sea that is just left burning yeah, and take over a boat and then defend that boat from, I assume, other pirates. Porsche pirates. Let's yeah. get it. The <laughs> world's first now, true battle royale. There's Porsche Maritime pirates and there's applies. Porsche pirates. That's nuts. Right. The Porsche Pirates versus the Porsche Pirates. Yes, exactly. Yeah. People yeah. leave like a fucking glitter bomb on the fucking boat <laughs> so that people take it home and get all pepper sprayed hey. and shit. I, hey. I, I love the fact that, that this exists and that everyone's like, yeah, no. So I thought it was weird. I looked it up and yeah, maritime law. In fact, you can go claim that they've abandoned the vessel. And I'm like, oh my God. That's, Boys, do we want to go on a little a pirate adventure of our very own? I don't we think will, we can we get to the Azores. <laughs> we can try. I don't think we can do that. All that Chiluminati money, boys. We can get out there. No what problem. Boat are we gonna, will, what, what boat we are we going to We'll be take? destroyed. We will we'll just, get We'll killed. rent a kayak and we'll just get out there. Where Someone, is it? Uh, it's in the Azor Islands. It's like in the Azor water. Around. Someone said that, uh, yes, maritime law applies. You can go seize that vessel if you want. But maritime law also applies to the fact that, like, someone could just shoot your ass for attempting to get on board. So, like, there could be snipers or whatever. That's and what I'm saying. Climbing, they could shoot the, you. That's the problem. Yeah. What a way like, to go, though, if that's how you go, dude. No, that's a dumb way to go. You want to get sniped off of a fucking... <laughs> Cargo ship because you tried to <laughs> steal a burning Porsche. <laughs> that sucks. That's a terrible In way Portugal. To go. I'll take that over being serial murdered. Oh man, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, all of the people who those Porsches and other cars that were on board that uh, ship are now like, "What are we gonna do?" And they're like, "We, what do you want us to do?" Yeah, what <laughs> do you want? Is on fire Shit's on and fire, sink. bro. Yeah, like yeah. there's <laughs> that's a customer service issue now. <laughs> <laughs> Give Sorry. them a call, they'll handle it. Don't mm -hmm. worry about it. Yep. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening to this mini sode. We'll be back next week with a brand new one, 84, as we slowly approach mini sode 100, which is crazy. Uh, we appreciate your support. We appreciate you guys hanging on the Patreon for uh, getting all this cool stuff and supporting us directly. And we will see you all next week. I'm going to do 100 mysteries on the 100th mini -sode. Oh my <laughs> good fucking God. <laughs> if you could do like oh, that, that Reddit thing where it's like 100 two sentence mysteries. Now that would be fire. I'm just going to read 100 of those really bad short horror stories on Reddit. <laughs> Dude, you got to integrate the mini into the JFK uh, story. You know, one JFK episode publicly one JFK episode mini -sode. one JFK. Yeah, you I'll go back announce, I'll do a press release about the structure, the release Thank structure. You, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. It's 2023, so you know what that means. It's time for me to tell you how much I love HelloFresh, just like all of 2022. And of course, thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring the episode. And stop asking me what HelloFresh is at this point. I'm just going to tell you, and you should know that by now. It's farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes that are delivered directly to your doorstep. Yeah, you get to skip trips to the grocery store and you just count on HelloFresh to make home cooking way easier and way more fun. Most importantly, way more affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. You've got New Year's goals? Hell, I have New Year's goals. Kind of. I'm trying anyway. And HelloFresh is here to help you achieve some of those. Skip the grocery store and take control of your time and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh's festive fair, oof, you'd say that's 17 times fast, collection features limited time recipes made with seasonal produce and premium proteins. Get out of the post-holiday slump with these elevated winter classics. With HelloFresh, eating well in the new year can be stress-free and delicious with over 35 weekly recipes. They have the options you're looking for to help you achieve your goals, and you get to choose calorie smart and carb smart recipes, or even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading your proteins, or adding protein to a veggie dish. I cannot believe I've been using HelloFresh for a, about a year and some odd months now. I, I say about and then give you a very specific answer. 
Uh, it just becomes such a normal part of my life at this point. I just, I don't even actually pick the recipes anymore. I, I did for like the first four or five months until I tried everything. And then I realized there was like one dish that I wasn't a huge fan of, but even then it was still good. So I just let them pick the meals they send me and I'm, it's even easier for my simple brain. Food show up at door, me cook food, food in belly. And you can get food in belly by going to hellofresh.com slash chill21 and using code chill21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Yeah, that's about all you got to do. Hellofresh.com slash chill21 and use code chill21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Thank you again to HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Hello, my little Chaluminots, and welcome back. Mm. Oh, Maybe Still uncomfortable. Still not... No, nah, I'm not feeling uh, it. Mm. No? You've felt no. it a couple times, Jesse. I wish you would feel it one more time. You know what? <laughs> I can't go immediately from multiple murders to like, <laughs> hello, my little <laughs> shit. I can't do it. I just, I, it's not, I'm, I'm not yeah, capable fair. of it. I'm, I've, dude, that's been my whole like two months. I'm good. <laughs> you know what I, I just realized? <laughs> Anyone listening to this normally not on Patreon is going to hear me say, after all those murders, it's just really <laughs> hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun of listening for free. That's, yeah, that's out of the context. best part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the you, get that, you get that fun. Mm -hmm. Trying to like pin when this was recorded. Yep. Uh, I hope you all had a. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed John Wayne Gacy. Everybody, I thank you guys. That was a. Um, it's been a. I'm just excited to get this off my chest. It's been sitting in my like research shelves for months, and now we're gonna talk about something not serial killer related at all. <sighs> hey guys, there's a mermaid. That is about to be analyzed by Japanese scientists to see exactly what this thing is. I'm going to link you a video. Can't wait for this. Here's the thing. Is it sexy? Depends. You could fuck it. You could fuck it. Uh, no, no, no. That's not, that's not uh, what I, can I fuck, asked you. I can fuck the couch. You know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> fair that's point. not what I asked you. I'm asking, is this? No, never mind. This is. <laughs> that is. All right. <sighs> A centuries-old ah. sacred mermaid mummy. Is this looks like a gyroid from Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I see that. It more looks like an Animal Crossing villager died. <laughs> it is it straight looks, up. It is straight up the torso of an ape. It is a like monkey a that got caught in the Mount Vesuvius blast. <laughs> Well, it it's a centuries old sacred mermaid mummy that is set to be scientifically analyzed by researchers in Japan in an attempt to determine the true nature of this mysterious creature. According to a local media report, the rather nightmarish oddity is said to have been captured by fishermen sometime around 1738 and subsequently passed through the hands of various owners until ultimately winding up at a Buddhist temple in the city of Asakuchi at some point in the last century. The curious creature, which resembles the half-human, half-fish con con construction of a classic mermaid, was showcased at the site for decades until being put into storage to protect the puzzling specimen. So it's been handed down for like a couple hundred years, apparently. I'm sure the story did not get mixed up at any point. Uh, it really does. Like, if you look at this and what I I find is just kind of archaeologically, it's just like it looks like. It looks like a monkey, I think. That's what I'm saying. It looks like it looks like some sort of like a not a chimpanzee, like one of the little tiny like a, what are those guys called? Like a spider uh, a monkey kind of thing? like a like the ones that yeah. smoke, like yeah, the ones yes. that smoke in yes. Thailand. That's exactly what I'm thinking of. Yes. Yeah, but it's got like if you look at uh, about what is the Asahi Shimbum company though? I have no idea. Why is it like a verified YouTube channel? If you pause it at thirty three seconds in on the right. That's what looks like it. Look, that looks like a fin, doesn't it? It could be a fish. Also, maybe there's a fish fossilized or mummified with this thing. I mean, okay. I see the fin. I see it looks like a Ruffles potato chip. Is what yeah, it looks yeah. Like. It does look like a Ruffles potato but, chip, but. Here's what I'm going to say. The idea of taking half of a monkey and half of a fish and putting it together is like one of the oldest, like, like nightmare alley style circus ass, like made up vaudeville ass people trying to trick people ass things there's ever been is yeah. the monkey and the fish. That's like so common. The mermaid skeleton. I so, feel like they're just still trying to pull this off to scientists today. It also could Alex, be like a monkey body sewed onto a fish carcass. <laughs> like for Alex, the uh, uh, Asahi Shimbun company is one of the four largest newspapers in Japan. That's what I looked up. 
So huh. it's at least it's like a, an official news site. But yeah, that's one. It definitely stinks of like every time I've been to a museum, they always have that one room that's like, this is what the museum used to be like. Like in <laughs> uh, the, the British Museum, they have like that weird uh, uh, area that's all wood. And then the, like, like, they have the, all like, the old timey. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in there's there, no there's rhyme, no definitely reason. one of those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, last little thing. Did you see the Na- the NASA Mars rover spotted a jettison drill bit on the surface of Mars, which is crazy? Like, it's that's not an like, alien one. It's one of ours. It's that's one, it's like, Earth- yeah, that's just that's, like magic. What like, are the chances of that yeah, happening? Coincidence shit. That's insane. I saw that and I was like, wow, that's nuts. But not worthy of like a full story. Just worth bringing up, though, because that's just like, I wonder what the odds are. All right. That's all I got, gentlemen. I uh, I would like to jump in here with truly a fascinating story. One that certainly only has one explanation. South Africa, female students scream, roll on floor over evil spirits attack. Some young ladies in uh, Kimberley, Northern Cape, South Africa were reportedly attacked by an evil spirit during school hours. The strange incident reportedly started after first period when 18 girls, mostly in grades 8 to 10, started crying, screaming, and rolling on the floor after apparently seeing a scary creature that was making them weak. Didn't that happen in the fucking Cabin in the Woods movie? Thank you. I was literally thinking of that scene where they like show the TVs of everybody having to do the thing they have to do around the world. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They all sing. Yeah. According to the reports, pastors were called to the school to deliver the female students from the evil spirit, while several parents also arrived upon learning about the incident. The incident comes barely two weeks after another school in Galeswuhi, Galeshiwa, Gal- Galeshiwa. Look, my Nailed apologies. Uh, on Nailed Tuesday, it. February 22nd, and they experienced a similar incident then. The affected learners were sent home in the care of their parents while the school was dismissed at 11 a.m. before a representative from Northern Cape Department of Education arrived. Chairs person of the school governing body, Jerry Th- uh, Thakiso, disclosed that the school called pastors because none of the staff were trained to deal with such situations, adding that the affected learners were isolated. This is the third school in Kimberley to be impacted by alleged evil spirits and conclusions were made that an opportunistic Satanist was using some sort of method what? on these young people and children in the area. Did, dude, did, those did they happen to look on TikTok? Did they did they look and see? There's only what? one explanation. Only one. Satanist. I want to. My favorite part is I know for a fact this is an American school. They would have been like. <laughs> We can wait for you to go back to class. Like, are you just going to gyrate on the floor? Because we can wait. Yeah, I'm going to well, call the security you're officer and he'll drag you back to class. <laughs> just sounds yeah, like no a devious lick. It just sounds like some fucking stupid ass prank that like went viral. Yeah. It, it, the fact that it's three schools, it definitely sounds like someone heard a thing and then was like, oh, my God, we can do this. And like how many cameras were present? Right. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's demons, though, Jesse. Maybe this is the one time. Maybe it is demons. Maybe this is the they finally you know what those eight to ten, the eighth, ten graders. They're in trouble. So you got to watch out for them. Alex, round us out here. Yeah. OK. Yeah, I got I kind of went like the science route today. I know Jesse usually does the <laughs> science stuff. I kind of went with the science stuff this time. Uh, this is. A real thing. I want to just say this is like not just like total nonsense from some crackpot, uh, but it's kind of OK. So lead author of this new paper that came out is a guy called Gregory Paul. He's an independent paleontologist and a paleo artist. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. <laughs> but he was a specialist on Jurassic Park. The movie. He just Does he just draw dinosaur erotica? I don't think it. I don't know about the erotica. I don't know why. I don't know how that's mixed Dinosaur in there. Rule thirty four is that what his his, his uh, paleo artist abilities are? I'm not an expert. I don't. I've never heard the word paleo artist before. Not sure that's exactly accurate. Can I, can I just re- request one art piece if you're listening out there? A T Rex fucking an airplane, please. All right, you've heard the man. It's got to be a pretty small airplane. <laughs> Jesse's gonna Google it. I know he is. Continue. Sorry. Uh, so basically. Him and these other two researchers, he was one of the specialists on Jurassic Park, which famously is inaccurate to how they depict dinosaurs oh, yeah. uh, in some cases. But uh, 
they put out a paper that's called, I forget what, the, uh, the, the paper is called Multiple Lines of Morpho- Morphological and Stratigraphic Evidence Support Subtle Evolution and Probable Speciation Within the North American Genus Tyrannosaurus. So they're saying that in the past, people have seen tons of Tyrannosaurus bones all over the place, especially in North America. And they've said, well, there's a lot of them that are different sizes. And they think, oh, some of them are juvenile. Some of them are old. So that explains the size difference. But what this new paper is suggesting is that they recategorize the, the, the Tyrannosaurus rex into three species that are called the Tyrannosaurus rex, which is the king, Tyrannosaurus regina, which is the queen, and Tyrannosaurus uh, imperator, which is the emperor. Ooh. Uh, and... Uh, Here's a quote that says, we found that the robustness in the sample we have of Tyrannosaurus, the variation of the femur is greater than all other Tyrannosaurids combined over 10 million years of evolution. You can't just not pay attention to that. They said they studied 37 different specimens of T-Rex and uh, they used that data to sort of like place them on a timeline uh, they say the more recent ones have uh, only one incisor on the lower jaw, which is weird. Mm. Um, like as if somehow the amount of incisors in their jaw went down over time and uh, they place them earliest to latest on the thing and they go. It's almost as if I think they are saying maybe that they get a little smaller. It goes from Imperator to T-Rex to Regina on the timeline. Right. Um, the, the quote how many, says, how I, much time is between those like millions of years ish? Yeah. Yeah. Like as if the species kind of changed or maybe was varied in some way. Uh, I understand the temptation to divide T-Rex into different species because there is some variation in the fossil bones that we have. But ultimately, to me, this variation is very minor and not indicative of meaningful biological separation of distinct species that can be defined based on clear, explicit, consistent differences. That is a quote from Steve Brusat. Uh, who is a paleontologist, uh, another one from Edinburgh, uh, who wasn't part of the study, but he felt so... What Are you guys trading T-Rex? He just sent me one, you know? I'm just taking a look. That's not a T-Rex uh, yeah, at I can't, all. There's, but, no, there's oh, no T-Rex. Oh! There's no, oh <laughs> that is a dragon dude, banging can, a car, he, though. I can That's see his little <laughs> dragon dick going in and out of the fucking back window. <laughs> the best window I could find. Thing. I couldn't find it's anything. That, uh, there's a yeah. loads of dragons fucking planes. That's a big one, which is what made me think of T-Rex fucking planes. Well, I mean, That's, obviously. Yeah. God damn. All right. Anyway, I'm back in the, I'm back in the real world again. Uh, he actually contacted New York Times, that guy, and said, you know what? That's bullshit. Um, they also, some other people said the, f- the study's vague. He said he also had a similar thing where he did 31, which is six less, but still. He said he saw no evidence for anything besides the one species. But it's kind of a thing. And if this and if this uh, is true, it recategorizes Sue, uh, the T-Rex, the famous T-Rex, I believe, into an Imperator. Cool. Uh, Having cool seen Sue up close and in person, the last time I was in Chicago, let me just say for the record, Sue is a big mama and I like Sue has got a massive gut. Like I can just imagine Sue trampling through like mama hungry. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. This is, this is like a real big debate. This is like one of those things where like one scientist says it and the other scientists are like, what the fuck are you smoke? Like, like this is like, you know, science. Sure. This is as interesting as it gets in this field. So that's uh, cool, though. I can definitely see that being that makes a lot of sense, you know, especially like just said millions of years ish in between each plenty of room for small, subtle variations and yeah. evolutions. Plus, it's fun that it's the T-Rex, right? Because it's such it's probably Iconic. the most popular dinosaur. Right? Yes, yeah. I would. It has to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Raptors are going to be real close second, though. Well, you know what? You should look up a real picture of a velociraptor. Oh, and yeah, then, no, they don't look yeah. anything like that. Uh, that's, the, the, that's, the biggest, that's the biggest snow job in history right there. Look up a picture <laughs> of Velociraptor. That's your, that's your homework, uh, viewers at home. Go check out a picture of an actual Velociraptor, and then you tell me that they're the coolest dinosaur again. Yeah, because they're not. They, they, they are like, very they clever not. girls, they're, though. They're cute, kind of. They, you know, they're like the size of like a turkey, though. They're, they're tiny. They're like a little well. chicken. Yeah, <laughs> like a little chicken. I mean, they maybe the chick are, are isn't ch- aren't chickens supposed to be descended from raptors or just dinosaurs in general? 
I mean, dinosaurs all birds. go to all birds. birds. Yes, obviously. But for some reason, I thought raptors and chickens were like closer related for some reason. Isn't that because that's what that kid says in uh, Jurassic Park before Dr. Grant shows him how the, the raptor would spill his guts out of his belly? Yeah. Well, it's it just like happen. a giant turkey to me or whatever he says. <laughs> it's been so long. I love that movie. It's good, though. It's a fantastic. Dr. Film. Grant looks at that kid and says, listen, not in this movie, kid. <laughs> <laughs> And on that, thank you all so much for your support here at Patreon.com. We'll be back next week with another mini-sode for your beautiful ears. Thank you guys again. We love you. Goodbye. Bye. It's 2023, which means I still don't like going to the post office. Thank you to Stamps.com for sponsoring this episode. January means dealing with customer emails, returns, gift card purchases, and the inevitable increase in postage costs. Stamps.com teamed up with the post office to get you huge mailing and shipping discounts up to 86% off. It's a new year no-brainer for your small business. Print your own postage right from your home or your office within minutes of signing up and never stress about finding the fastest and cheapest shipping solutions. Stamps.com does that all automatically for you. Can you see why I stopped going to the post office like years ago? Beyond Stamps.com's amazing partnerships with USPS and UPS for the unbeatable rates of up to 86% off, it's just your one-stop shop for all your shipping and mailing needs. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Get access to the USPS and UPS services you need to run your business right from your computer anytime, day, or night. No lines, no traffic, no waiting. Use Stamps.com to print postage wherever you do business. All you need is a computer and printer, and they even send you a free scale, so you'll have everything you need to get started. If you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through Stamps.com's dashboard. And if you sell products online, Stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. If that sounds good to you and sounds like it'll save you a lot of stress like it does for me, then you should start the new year by saving serious money on mailing and shipping. Get started at Stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code CHILL for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a free digital scale no long-term commitments, and no contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code CHILL. Thank you again to Stamps.com for sponsoring the episode. Hello, my little Chiluminots. Boom, and welcome boom, back. Boom. Welcome oh, back to today's oh, oh, oh. episode. The quieter ASMR. you get, the... the, the mm-hmm. It doesn't make it better. ASMR. It's more disconcerting. Oh, ASMR. Oh, oh. ASMR. No, that's... No. Yeah, Let me scratch yeah, my yeah, microphone yeah, yeah. my nails. Please, please don't. Oh, oh, Wait, hold on. Oh, oh. Please don't scratch your microphone. Oh, <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Jesse. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, one of us. Oh, one of us. Welcome to NPR. <laughs> all things considered. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, thank you for all the background music. Yeah. It was very good. I <laughs> <appreciate> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> all right. We just got off. Uh, a trilogy of serial killing. It's time to do something chill. Ooh, that's uh, a problem what, for me today. <laughs> yeah, oh, shoot. Oh, what'd you bring, Jesse? What'd you bring nah, to the just, table today? Just killings. Just murder. More murder? Yeah. A murder with a side of murder? Do you want to hear my murder story? Yeah, let's, let's yeah, what's we the murder well, about. What's murder into murder? So, Green Bay, Wisconsin. You already know it's going yep. to be bad. Ugh. A 24-year-old woman faces murder and other charges after police say she had sex with a man, then decapitated and dismembered his body into several pieces. Is that all? (laughs) And uh, I'm sure she had a good reason, right? Well, on February 23rd, the uh, chief of police in Green Bay had a press conference where he said that there was a suspicious death on the 800 block of Stony Brook Lane that day at around 325 a.m. The victim was identified as a 25 year old Green Bay residents uh, resident who did not live at the address, but was there. Investigators later went to the 2300 block of Eastman Avenue and took a person of interest into custody. New details about the man's death have since emerged, including charges against the suspect Taylor Shabusiness. That's her name. Business with a sh at the beginning of it. Taylor Shabusiness. She was booked on charges of first degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, third degree sexual assault, resisting or obstructing an officer. Her bond set at two million. Anyway, let's get to like what went down because I this is crazy. According to court documents, a woman at the Stony Brook Lane residence woke up 
to the sound of a door slamming between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. When she went downstairs, she found her son's head in a bucket. Oh, yeah. That's not how you want to start your day at all. Police spoke with Shabusiness because she was reportedly the last person to see the victim. They searched her van and allegedly found a crock pot with additional human body parts, including legs. What the fucking hell? She reportedly had blood on her clothing as well. Police obtained a search warrant for the Stony Brook Lane home and found the victim's head and male organ in a bucket. Fuck. Investigators also located the victim's torso in a storage tote. Shabizness. Oh, get ready for this. This is Shabizness reportedly told investigators she and the victim took meth earlier in the day. Oh, my God. And they had sex with chains involved. How are the chains involved? Well, (laughs) Shabizness reportedly explained that she started choking the victim with the chains during sex. Shabizness stated that she just went crazy while strangling the victim. She said, I could feel the victim's heart beating as she was choking him. So she kept pulling and choking him harder, but the victim would not die. And she just kept, and, and this, I'm not sure. I don't know what this means, but she, she said the victim would not die. And he just kept rebuilding into muscle. Don't know what that means. Don't know what rebuilding what into muscle fuck? means. <laughs> what happened here? Shabizzle yeah, allegedly used the chains to choke him while they were having sex. And then he died. And she just was like, oh, I want to see what that would look like. And then afterwards, she allegedly committed additional sex acts with the body and then decided like, well, I enjoyed choking him and I didn't mean to kill him, but I don't want to get arrested. So she took a bread knife and other knives from the kitchen and dismembered the body. So she wouldn't be oh. caught. A br- oh, a bread knife. And you just imagine just sitting there just like whittling away through fucking sinew and muscle I with a bread knife. I absolutely hate that. It's like she, uh, 127 hours vibes. Oh, my God. She business stated that the plan was for her to bring all the body parts with her in one go. But she got lazy and ended up only putting the leg and foot in the van and also forgot the head. Dude, it's like a serial killer who jumped to their last kill and got lazy and I didn't just, care anymore. So how did the mom find the, the son? It was at his house. She like literally. <laughs> yeah, she just was la- like she went to go kill this dude or I guess cut up the dude she had killed and like just left parts around. Like that's crazy to me that this is God, and man. it all started because they were just having really rough sex. And then she was like, I wonder what would happen if I, I just this. kept going. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. Like, uh, that's not mm, that's that's not a good thought to have. <laughs> like, now I'm not like gonna say meth is terrible, but <laughs> no one's doing this shit when evidence. they're like high on weed. I'm just putting it out there. No right. one's like, you know what? I like. I'm never like. Maybe I should like mm. pull these chains harder to choke this person more because <laughs> no of the weed coursing through weed. my veins. No, not once. Yeah, it's never happened. <laughs> the lesson to take away from this insane shit: you never know any. You truly never know a person. So just be careful out there, people. Like, if you're going to hook up with somebody you don't know very well, take some precautions. Let them know where you people, you know, let your family know. Maybe some friends know where you're going. Just, you know, don't just disappear with somebody. You (laughs) might end up in six parts. I think what Mathis is trying to say is that you should (laughs) always mind (laughs) shabizness. Amazing. Honestly, incredible. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh god i just at least she didn't eat anything i guess she didn't go cannibal she, she didn't did go put Dahmer the man in a crock her. pot though i mean that's like one step removed crock pot is on the way to that's dinner true, actually yeah. that's true she did cross she was she was domering it up a little bit she was domering like it up She's a like, little where bit where am i gonna put all these pieces i know my crock pot i don't that like is that one step away from me like what if i turned it on like that Dude, we're is- gonna do we're doing domer soon so be ready we're knocking that out positively of the horrific on both counts yep. All right, so Alex, lighten us up a little bit. What did you bring to the table? I'm going to read the first sentence of first two sentences of this uh, article verbatim from MysteriousUniverse.org. First, oh. just to set the tone, and then we're going to go from there. Mention the word friends and ghost in the same sentence, and most people will think of Casper 
The Friendly Ghost, a cartoon character created in the late 1930s for a children's storybook who went on to star in comic books, five television shows, and dozens of films and shorts. That's far more than the two Friends stars with ghost stories we're talking about today. Oh, who is it? We got two two of them? All right. It's Jesse, who do you think it is? Oh, oh it's 100% Matt LeBlanc, for sure. Uh-huh. Okay. For sure. And... um. Uh, Lisa Kudrow. Okay, well, who do you That's think? Yes, I would have said Lisa Kudrow as well. But since you said it, I'll go with, I'll go with uh, Courtney Cox for the girl and David Schwimmer for the boy. Oh, what about the? Oh uh, no, I'm sticking with what I got. I'm sticking with what I said. I'm not going to change. Right. Matt, this was it. closest. It was Courtney Cox and Jennifer yes. Aniston. Can I tell oh, you something? Well, I never would have guessed. I didn't Aniston. say either of them because I was thinking they still have. Like active careers, so there's no way they self sabotage <laughs> like that. Clearly, <laughs> I'm wrong. So check it out. So here's what happened. So I don't know about this Jennifer Aniston thing. I actually think they shoehorn Jennifer Aniston into this article, but <laughs> just for the clicks, I yeah. wouldn't doubt that at all. But, what? Uh, no. There was a scream. What? There was a scream that came out recently. There was, yes. a, there was a scream out. Was it good? Did you boys see it? I heard no. it was good. I did not see it. The, the last movie I saw was Batman. Very good. Go see Batman. It was good. Uh, but. So she was at uh, Kimmel to talk about Scream 5. Courtney Cox was. And she revealed that at one point in time, she lived in the house that Carol King lived in, like in Laurel Canyon, like the singer songwriter Carol King uh, that's on the cover of Tapestry. She met James Taylor there. Joni Mitchell wrote all her most famous songs there. It's crazy. uh, But uh, here's a quote from her about what happened. Uh, She said, I was at the house one day, not being a believer, and the doorbell rang. It was a UPS guy or something, and I opened the door, and he said, do you know this house is haunted? And I go, yeah, why? Why do you think that? He goes, because there is someone standing behind you. And I was like, let's sell. Uh, (laughs) So uh, apparently the house was built in 1926. Nobody knows for sure uh, what the ghost is. Courtney Cox doesn't know anything about the ghost. Carol King never talked about the ghost. All we know is that Cox lived there uh, from the 80s, late 80s to 1991 before she was in Friends, which is pretty wild. Um, And that's really weird. And she said that that's how she knew she arrived in L.A. was when somebody told her that she had a ghost in her house, which I don't know what that means when she's coming from New York City, a very haunted place, home of the Ghostbusters. Uh, But But apparently only only in L.A. would someone be like, there's a ghost in New York to be like, get over it, pal. Shut up, got ghosts. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) Everybody has a ghost, you bitch. (laughs) Is that that what I'm in for when I visit New York in a few weeks? Yeah. Everybody's going to call you a everybody's going to call you a bitch. And B, you're going to be they're going to shove their ghosts down your throats. All you're going to hear. Oh, man, I'm going to come back and change, man. Everybody has a ghost, bitch. Shut the fuck up, you bitch. Let me you tell you bitch. about my ghost. My grandma has five ghosts. You, she don't complain about it. Actually, she makes Matt, some, this, she I'm makes some lasagna. You, I'm just going to send you a go. pizza. Pizza, man. I'm going to come back a hardened man. A hardened man because of all the cheese clogging your veins. That's fine with me. Uh, the mouth on okay, this Okay, but one. apparently Jennifer Aniston in 2018 also had a ghost story. She went on James Corden and she said that her roommate heard noises. The dishwasher starting up coffee maker starting up the stereo turning on things that were quote terrifying uh and aniston said she hired a medium who lit incense in a dish and uh the 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 the, the medium walked to a corner of the room the dish where the the incense was burning cracked and uh she said that at first she thought it was gonna it was the dish just being heated by the by the incense like fire or whatever but then another ashtray also cracked and then the the medium told her that the ghost didn't like her roommate uh so aniston left her roommate in the apartment with the ghost that didn't like her i guess uh and then amazingly this this article ends with uh literally the scene between johnny uh donny osmond and joey and gene on friends the one where the stripper cries it's just the scene do you want to do it what <laughs> you want Wait, to do what? the scene i'll be donny osmond you be gene <laughs> mathis 
and uh, you be Joey, Jesse. Okay. Whoa. Here we go. <laughs> Not that Joey. Awesome. Different Joey. <laughs> Give me twenty seconds on the clock. Ready? Go. The word is you cream. Put this in your coffee. Uh, a spoon. Your hands. Your face. It's white. Paper. Snow. A ghost. It's heavier than milk. A rock. A dog. The earth. Pass. Okay. The word is mayonnaise. Uh, you put this on a sandwich. Salami. Anchovies. Jam. It's white. Paper. Snow. A ghost. And that, <sighs> my friends, is the one where the stripper cries from friends as performed by the Chiluminati podcast. Don't let anybody ever tell you you don't get anything amazing on these minisodes because you fucking the do, earth. okay? Whoa. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, blossom. Whoa. You guys remember Blossom? Nobody it's does. Me, it's me, Joey. Whoa. Everybody remembers do, friends, not Blossom. Whoa. I remember brotherly love, though. I do remember brotherly love. What the hell is brotherly love? That, what? That's that's the the uh, three boys' own show that lasted like two seasons. Oh, jeez, three... oh, Blossom. Uh, what's that's, his name? That's Who? Sting's voice. Oh, oh geez, Blossom. Joey, Blossom? Joey, Blossom? Joey, what was, yeah, what was Joey's Joey last Joey Lawrence. Name? Lawrence, the Lawrence brothers. All yeah. the Lawrence oh, brothers had a show. Oh my god, why do you know this shit? Why are you why are you in the weird like <laughs> alternate universe bad watched. television nineties? <laughs> oh, I watched, oh, awesome. Dude, I was like, I watched TGIF. Wasn't one of the Lawrence brothers also on Boy Meets World? Joe was like yes, friend. Yes, the yeah, the middle one. Yeah. Well, man, the they, they was were a regular like the Hanson of Hollywood for a while. Damn. They were. Or maybe yeah, it was yeah, Matthew yeah. Lawrence, Even, who was, yeah, I think the, you're right. The Hanson of yeah, yeah. Hollywood is a weird Cause then, phrase. Because then in the later seasons, Sabrina showed up and was like an evil witch in one of those episodes. Remember that? All right. In Boy Meets World. I like Sabrina's sassy cat. I was like, I'm a sassy cat, bitch. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, you are. What the hell right, channel I'll, is this on? NBC and the WB? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. TGIF, baby. Brotherly love, dude. What in the world? Yep, yep, I love that show. Okay, uh, let's see. Here's that should what I be got. the mystery. Lost media, brotherly love. <laughs> uh, so an archaeologist gentleman has claimed to have solved the mystery of Stonehenge. A new Stonehenge study seemingly confirms the longstanding theory that the famed megalithic site once served as a solar calendar for its ancient creators. Archaeologist Timothy Darville of Britain's Bournemouth, Bournemouth University conducted the potentially revelatory research, which was presented in a paper published earlier this week by the journal Antiquity. This is the most a sensible pres- thing I've ever heard you say, ever. <laughs> it's a Out slow news week, all the possible man. things that know, you could have said about what Stonehenge was, you were like, eh, it's a calendar. I'm like, yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> okay, I got to get you on my side to make it worse later on when I betray you with right, the crazier right, right, of shit. Course, of course. Uh, In a press release detailing the study's findings, he noted that, quote, the clear celestial alignment of Stonehenge Stonehenge sparked theories that it was some uh, some kind of calendar. Since the antiquarian William Stuckley, who exhaustively studied the monument in the 1720s. However, how exactly it functioned has remained a mystery that may have finally been solved. Darville explained that his research was informed by a recent study, which determined that the site's iconic stones all originated from the same location when they're assembled in 2500 BC, which if you were at the live show back in uh, England, we talked about that. where like where the stones came from and stuff. Sure. It was just Merlin made them go there. That's the actual answer. When are we going to go back to England? When is that happening? <laughs> when is the Chilo- Chiluminati tour of the UK happening? Let's go. You, I'm down. down. London's live like one of our, in Sherwood Forest. The when is it happening? Look, the moment we London's film like our house. number two city, yeah. which is crazy. Shout out to all our London fans out you there. You haunted people. Yeah, you haunted people. <laughs> Let's do uh, a let's do a overseas uh, haunted house after we do our uh, LA one on seas yeah. haunted house. Yeah, I'd be so man haunted England. Oh yeah, that's, oh, that's the scary. that's the glo- that's the glory hole. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Is. I, and I would stick anything in the UK haunted glory hole. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're what? all nodding. That's what we're no, all doing. No one yeah. nodded. No, no yeah. only you are nodding. Only no. you were not. No, no, you can't do the eyebrow thing. You can't wink and nod and point. This is not working. Oh, no, yeah, no baby. one can see this. No. You hear that snap? No. That's right before a point. I snap, then I point. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> the proposed calendar works in a very straightforward way, Darvel said. Each of the 30 stones in the Sarsen circle represents a day within a month, itself divided into three weeks each of 10 days. In order to form a complete solar year, he noted, the timepiece includes an intercalar, interca- intercalary? intercalary month consisting of five days, which are represented by capped stone structures known as 
trilithons found at the center of the site. This sounds fucking made up at this point. I'll get. I'll send the press release your way. Trilithons. Come on, dude. I don't know what these words mean. Sounds like it's from Dianetics. I'm gonna. I'll Google it. (laughs) Yeah, it's in the Antiquity Journal. If you guys want to read the study yourself, Um, but. Yeah, so it's just it's a calendar that they had three 10 day weeks as opposed to what we're doing now, apparently. Oh, I'm kind of that. so the thing that we all in our minds think of when we think of Stonehenge, the structure of the two big stone things with like another st- like a, a stone. I don't know how you describe it, like a stone arch where it's yeah. the two the two pieces of stone and then another stone across. That's the Trilithon. OK, well, there you go. Yep, so there you go, boys. I brought science to today's episode. You did. Just for you. I wow. hope you enjoyed it, Jesse. That's the one. That's your one. I've never been more proud of you. You could have gone any direction. Instead, you went there. And frankly, I'm here for it. Did you like that the actress that I brought up has the same last name as you? Uh, I I did. And uh, every time I try to do a, a gift search on Twitter to use one of my own faces, it's 90% her. So it's always good. I'm going yeah, to keep a, that in mind going forward. Thank you. We got to make the Jesse Cox face show up before Courtney Cox. Oh, yeah. Let's go for real. UK tour when? Sign me up. I'm there. I'm in. I, yeah, you tell me and I'm there. It's not a big but place. You're we the can tour just... man now. I don't do I don't do nothing no more. <laughs> you sign yeah. me up. Let's go. All let's right, go four or five times. Out. Let's go four or five times a year. Let's go six times a year. Or we just, just do one UK. tour. I'll just fly to England UK. for we go, fun. We go six times a year. We do an Irish friends. stop, Scottish Ooh. stop, Northern England stop, Southern England stop. One, two, three, four. That's four times by rail. The number of, by right. rail. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. by rail. We have to all wear like three piece suits and go by rail when we land when we land the first thing we do is we go get a bespoke suit made and we wear it the entire trip Uh, that's where the budget of the tour is going going. i'm there bespoke (laughs) tweed suit (laughs) yeah we'll visit the kingsman we'll get our suit and we'll just like go off on an adventure yeah love that that'd be great well until then though we're out of here till next week everybody thank you guys so much for listening and supporting at patreon goodbye peace anyway Me and my wife were sitting outside indulging on our porch one night, enjoying ourselves. I needed to go to the bathroom, so I stepped back inside, and after a few moments, I hear my wife go, Holy shit, get out here! So I quickly dash back outside, and she's looking up at the sky in awe. I look up too, and there's a perfect line of dozen lights traveling across the sky.